stay tuned for a special presentation where Mr. Sakurai reveals the next fighter! <sighs> Reading tweets like that from Nintendo always fills us with excitement, and inevitable doubt given the magnitude of fake tweets made about stuff like that, but it's now been over a month since Min Min, the last DLC fighter, was released. We're all growing more eager to find out who the next fighter will be, but we really have no idea when they'll even be announced, let alone what character we'll be getting. That's why we'll be using this video to take a look at past DLC patterns and choices to form some educated speculations for the future. For our question of the day, when do you think the next DLC fighter will drop, and who are you expecting? Let us know in the comments, and stay tuned to learn more clues. Gino! Now that we have your attention, consider checking out ProGuides.com if you'd like to learn more about Smash. We've got detailed guides on every character, which will include Gino if he's released, and you can check out our live classes to play with pros. If you're in search of a great coach, ProGuides.com is the only place where you'll find InstaPro, a service connecting you to dozens of coaches in your game of choice. Taking a step back to where it all began, Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64 didn't have any DLC characters. It did, however, provide a similar experience when you learned that a new challenger is approaching playing the game for the first time. In a world with a primitive internet and no social media, you often wouldn't know what characters were in the game until you actually unlocked them, and that was exciting. Having no DLC meant no patches or updates as well, which forced players to adapt to the balance of the cast. But there actually were patches even as early as Smash 64, and they just didn't come in the form of a downloadable update. If you look at the differences between regional versions of the game, you'll notice that the developers changed a ton. In addition to overall gameplay changes like a huge SDI buff, various character adjustments occurred from the Japanese version to the US version to the European and Australian versions of Smash 64. Some characters even changed sizes! Melee didn't quite vary as much, but the same phenomenon applies. In Melee, there are actually three different US versions, 1.0, 1.01, and 1.02, as well as the European PAL version. Overall gameplay mechanics were pretty much the same between all versions, with some very specific adjustments made to fix glitches. Characters, on the other hand, have seen notable differences. Perhaps most infamously, Fox is nerfed in the PAL version. He's lighter in weight, his up smash is weaker, and his Firefox travels less distance. This may show how keenly the developers studied competitive Smash even back then, and among other changes, leads some players to consider PAL the definitive version of Melee. Major tournaments still play on NTSC, though. In 2008, Brawl became the first Smash game to feature online features. Sadly, online updates and DLC were not among them. Furthermore, there were no gameplay differences in the versus format between versions, so Meta Knight was just as broken no matter where or when you played. This lack of updates was likely implemented to keep online players from desyncing on different versions. By the time we hit the Wii U era, DLC was a mainstay in modern video games, and leading up to Smash 4's release, we were all hoping for new content updates. In one of the most famous trailers, it was revealed that Mewtwo would be available as a free DLC character for players who owned both the 3DS and Wii U versions of the game. Although he was initially slated to be the only character dropping after the game's release, Mewtwo goes down in history as the first DLC character in a Smash game. We were all too excited to care, but Mewtwo's inclusion wasn't the full DLC experience, as he was simply returning from Melee with a tweaked moveset. Likewise, Lucas was announced as the next DLC fighter during a Nintendo Direct around six months after the game released. This was a big deal as it opened the door for the potential of more DLC characters coming after all. And sure enough, upon Lucas's release date, a surprise presentation revealed that Roy would also be returning along with the first DLC newcomer. Unfortunately, a data mine spoiled this massive surprise, but on June 14th, Ryu of Street Fighter joined the Smash 4 roster. Ryu was huge for Smash DLC. Not only was he the first DLC character not featured in a previous Smash title, but Ryu represented a third-party franchise. From here, we knew that anything could happen, but it's hard to say if anyone was really ready for what happened next. Just a few months later during a Nintendo Direct, a twinkly star-filled screen opened a new trailer for perhaps the most mind-blowing reveal in Smash DLC history. Yes, on that day, Cloud Strife of Final Fantasy VII and Advent Children was confirmed as a fighter for Smash. 
Cloud's reveal sparked all sorts of discussion of who the next fighter would be, especially since Nintendo had invited its player base to share their opinions. Back in April of 2015, Nintendo revealed the Smash Fighter Ballot, a simple online questionnaire that allowed anyone to vote for a character they wanted to be in Smash. Although the ballot voting closed before Cloud's release, it was confirmed that he had not been the result of its votes, building further upon the suspense and speculations. Finally, on the date of Cloud's release, the last Smash 4 Direct presentation revealed the future of the game. The presentation opened with the announcement of Corrin, spawning the conception of the ANOTHER FIRE Emblem CHARACTER memes. To conclude the Direct, the winner of the ballot was finally revealed to be... Bayonetta! Bayo was another pretty huge third-party inclusion, but she didn't actually win the ballot at all. Yet again, Nintendo underestimated the data miners, as it was years later discovered that Bayonetta's parameters had actually been present in the game as early as two weeks after the ballot started. In a bit of a pickle, Sakurai admitted that the ballot was actually intended for Smash Ultimate, and this seems accurate given Ultimate's newcomers. Speaking of Ultimate, the Smash community had extremely high expectations for DLC building up to the new title, and Nintendo delivered. About a month before Ultimate's release, the most shocking DLC character ever was announced. Piranha Plant! Wow! What? Okay, that one was just weird, but Plant was really just a free promo character for players who bought the game early. The real hype came one day before Ultimate's release at the 2018 Game Awards. Few of us were even expecting any Smash news at all, but what we got, you might say, you'd never see it coming. That's right, Joker from Persona 5 was revealed as the first DLC character in the new Fighters Pass, which featured a total of five unrevealed DLC fighters. From here, we can start paying more attention to the timeline. Joker was released on April 17th, 2019. The next DLC fighter, Hero, was revealed during a Direct on June 11th of 2019. Unlike Joker, Hero released shortly after his announcement, dropping on June 30th. Two character reveals are rare for one presentation, but this was Nintendo's E3 Direct, arguably their biggest moment of the year. Banjo dropped on September 4th, just slightly over two months after Hero. Going from Joker in April to Hero in late June, then to Banjo in early September, there's a pattern of an approximately two-month gap between each release at this point. This pattern continued with Terry Bogard, who released on November 6th, and again with Byleth, who released on January 28th, 2020. Byleth completed the first Fighter's Pass, prompting a logical gap before the first character in the next pass would be announced. Seeing as this was our first time jumping from one Fighter's Pass to the next, we have nothing to compare it to, but it's likely that the worldwide pandemic played a large role in the long delay of the next fighter. Around five months after Byleth's release, Min Min was announced and released shortly thereafter at the end of June 2020. Although a long wait, this matches the average wait time in between fighters in Smash 4, so all things considered, it's still pretty fast. The second Fighter's Pass was stated to be the last DLC for Ultimate, featuring not five, but six new fighters slated to release by the end of 2021. This announcement was made before the pandemic, however, and Sakurai has mentioned the difficulties it's caused for development. In the present moment, it makes sense to doubt a timely release of the next fighter, but looking at the patterns, it hasn't been two months since Min Min's release yet. Based on the history, the next fighter would be released somewhere between late August and early September. The announcements for the characters are also important to look at. Most of the major announcements took place in Nintendo Directs that also showcased other upcoming games. The pandemic has delayed tons of games to the point where, as of this video in mid-August, Nintendo has still not made a big summer presentation. This not only can lead to the delay of new character announcements due to delayed directs, but the characters themselves may be tied to upcoming games. DLC fighters are often used as promotions for upcoming or newly released games, so the next character source game could be pulling it back. Frankly, this would be worth the wait if the new choice is another exciting third-party rep. Some exciting possibilities include Hornet of Hollow Knight Silksong. The long-anticipated sequel to Hollow Knight, which by the way, if you haven't played it yet, 
You really should, because it's like my favorite freaking game ever. Was playable at last year's E3 and is confirmed for release on Switch, but it's been a long time since we've heard anything about a release date. This might be wishful thinking, but with Halo Infinite coming soon to the new Xbox consoles, Master Chief could be possible. With the low excitement levels for Byleth and Min Min, another huge third-party character would be an amazing hype builder for Smash Ultimate. Hopefully we won't have to wait long to find out. As of now, we still don't have any confirmation that the next character is delayed. However likely as it may be, we can be sure that the developers will get these new characters to us eventually as promised, so from here, we can only hope that they choose our favorites. Hey guys, Bonk here. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Pro Guides and turn on notifications for more Smash content.